It's been a little over two years since I bought this house and I still feel like I'm trying to get settled in, especially in this room. Let me give you a tour. So right now, this room is working double duty as an office slash guest bedroom. Um, it'll probably stay as a office slash guest bedroom because we'll always want family to come over and stay over once in a while. So we have to keep this spare bed. The house is painted like this all gray, which I like, but I want to be able to make this room a little bit more unique, be more conducive for, for work. So I've already started planning, putting up shelves on this little nook area. I've kind of laid out a long shelf right here and two floating shelves. They're all gonna be floating shelves. And then I've eventually built a built-in floating desk right here, kind of marked out areas of where of how high I want the desk and stud locations so currently this room is in the works but I need to change the color of these walls and all gonna be white this wall is probably is most likely gonna be flat black I want to be able to to paint the ceiling all black as well but the wife isn't too confident on how that's going to look I'm still trying to sell her on that idea in the meantime I'm gonna keep it white and then if she likes how everything is and it doesn't look too small, I may, I may do the ceiling black. But for now, just to get step one going, I'm going to prep this room and start painting the walls. I decided to build the shelves out of a standard 1x8 boards, glue, pre-drill, and using 2.5 inch screws. I didn't want to do too much cutting and trimming, so I used the height of the board as the height of the full shelf. In order to mount the shelf to the wall, I inserted this 1x2 piece to the back of the shelf so I had something to screw through the drywall into the studs. In the middle of constructing the shelf, I decided I wanted to make a portion of the enclosed shelf with hidden storage. So I used an extra portion of a 1x8 board and mounted it with four of these 90 degree spring hinges. Before staining the shelf, I lightly misted with water and wiped down any excess dust. From my research, this helped collect any loose dust and raised the grain of the wood in order to accept the stain better. I brushed on about two coats of satin polyacrylic, making sure to let dry at least an hour between coats. For the desktop, I used four 1x6 boards and arranged the grain pattern to what looked best. I marked the boards to where I wanted to use dowel pins. You can use biscuits or dominoes, but I didn't find it necessary to buy extra tools. I am, after all, a greenhorn of DIYers. Add glue on all the sides, knock in all the pins, and start putting everything together. Five clamps seemed to work just fine, but I could have definitely used more. For the front face of the desk, I used a one by two and a half piece to cover the front edge. This piece covers the frame that the desk will get mounted to and adds a bit of depth to the desk. Again, I wish I had more clamps. Once the glue dried overnight, I scraped off the glue squeeze out. 
Whatever excess glue I couldn't get with the scraper, I went over with an orbital sander. Same process with the shelf. I rubbed on two to three coats of stain and three coats of polycrylic. For the frame, I used two by threes. Two long pieces for the front and back, and four shorter pieces for the cross braces. Again, in the interest of saving costs, I improvised my own pocket holes instead of using a Craig pocket hole jig. It worked just fine. For the back of the desk, I wanted to route my cables from underneath the desk as close to the wall as possible. So I cut a dado through the back frame as a channel for cables to pass through. This project was more challenging than I expected. The measurement of the back wall was wider than the opening, and the right wall wasn't completely straight. It was sort of concave inward, which created gaps along the right side of the desk. My only solution was to cut filler strips of wood to fill the gaps I didn't take into account. This project wasn't terribly difficult, it was just time consuming figuring out the hurdles I came across. It's been a couple of weeks, maybe almost a month, since I finished this project. I added more stuff to it, some lighting, um, accent lighting up there. It's still a long way from from being completed. Um, Want to add some uh, some art pieces up there, fill up the shelf with maybe more cameras and lenses and some books to fill it up. I noticed while editing this video, I didn't really go into detail on the process and kind of more, I didn't really make it instructional on what I did to, to build those two shelves. I didn't even film that middle shelf right here. But yeah, I didn't really go into detail of this whole um, desk nook. For me, it wasn't really supposed to be instructional on how to do everything step by step. There's so many videos out there. This application may not have probably worked for you. Videos that I've searched and, and watched applied to me and how to deal with obstacles that um, I, I came across. In the beginning, I was kind of torn between doing a standing sit-down lifting desk, electronic lifting desk, but that means that there had to be legs on the ground and I didn't want that. And the only kind of thing that I wanted visible on the ground were the IKEA drawer set that I that I got. But essentially, it's a floating desk that I wanted. I kind of want to add a little bit more value to the house by doing a built-in. wasn't really meant to be instructional, just to show you guys that a guy like me that has no experience in building anything other than skateboard ramps back when I was a kid. This is the kind of planning that I did. I drew everything out to almost the close to the T of how it turned out, this little front part that covers the the frame. Originally it was supposed to have shelves on the side. Yeah, it was this is initially how I wanted it, but the computer that I have kind of didn't have room to do that. And that was kind of, for me I think that was too much work than versus doing one full length shelf across. I even to the, went to the lengths of kind of planning out how I was gonna join the corners and of that top shelf together using um, dowels how the frame design was supposed to be like a notched out. I'll, I'll explain this. I'll, I'll do a desk setup tour and, and how I managed all the, the cable management underneath the desk and then kind of explain why I did the 45 degree angle right here. Planning out the, the hinges up on the top shelf right here. So yeah, that's that was my process and a lot of that was just drying out and then finding out, the, figuring out which hardware to use and all that stuff. But yeah, if you guys made it this far in the video, Again, why? But besides that, thank you for sticking around this long. I hope this video was informative for you guys and you took something out of it. I for sure had fun doing this project. I'm having even more fun shopping for stuff to add to this. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, go ahead and give me that sub. Also, also, comment down below on the coolest setups that you guys have been inspired to because I've been on Instagram and Pinterest and just pinning everything that has inspired me to make this look like anything that I could probably post on an inspo desk eye setups, whatever, all those cool, rad, super, super dope, pristine looking desks that I've, I've been dreaming to want to do with my own. I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. Nicely new, one month old new desk setup that I have going on here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.